now I actually have it recording. So I have a cylinder here. Uh, I don't have Playmaker yet. So the general thing I'm going to start working with, I'm going to just make one barrel explode by itself. I'm going to set up that behavior with a delay and an explosion particle, and then I'm going to set it up so it can chain and explode other things. Let me import Playmaker here. I like to work in steps. I like to see that uh, what I'm working on works at the smallest level first, and then I'll build up from there because I want to make sure that uh, I don't try to take on too much at once. Otherwise, it gets like really buggy, and I can't tell what's working and what's not. I like to start with the very simplest thing that I know I can get working. Like I put a, I put a cylinder in there. And maybe the thing I want to do is um, maybe I'll set it up so that when I click on this barrel, that I'll cause it to blow up. Maybe I'll just first detect that I can click on the barrel. Sound good? Playmaker FSM. So in order for me to click on barrels, I'm going to make an empty object. This is going to be my click manager. And all this thing I want to do is I want to detect when I've clicked on a barrel and then send it an event telling it to blow up. That's, that's all I'm going to do to start. So Playmaker, FSM. I'm going to go here. I have my state. I'm going to call this thing waiting for a click. Make another state that says um, process click. Another one that says did click barrel. Another one that says cause barrel to explode. Actually, cause barrel. I'm going to say tell barrel to explode. So waiting for a click, I'm going to hook these up. It's just going to say get mouse button down. When I click the left mouse button, I'm going to fire an event that says clicked. Go back to here. Clicked. Add the transition. Go here. Process click, I'm going to do a mouse pick. And here, I want to store the game object. Object clicked. OK. Process click, go here. Now, the way I want to tell whether I clicked on a barrel or not, I could, I could either put all the barrels in their own layer, or I could compare tags of the barrels to see if um, it's something that I consider to be a barrel. Um, let's do a layer mask. I'm going to add a mask so that I can only click on barrels. So I'm going to go here, go to my layers. I'm going to just add a barrel layer here. So these guys I'm going to tag as a barrel. So the barrel has been tagged with that layer. Go back to my FSM. So now I'm only going to filter, and I'm only going to allow it to click on barrels. So I'm going to do all these. I got the object that I clicked. I don't actually need to test anymore whether I clicked a barrel or not, because it'll only click on a barrel. It'll only actually give me a barrel OK. Um, store did pick object. Need one more variable. Did click object. I need to say add a state here. By default, I want it to just go back and wait for click, even if I didn't click anything. Otherwise, if I did click an object, bool test. If I clicked an object, fire the clicked event, go here. Oops. And then tell the barrel to explode. So I'm just going to do this. Send event. The event's going to be an FSM. I'm going to specify the game object. Use the object that I clicked here. Name's going to be FSM. And let us just pick. Go to the barrel here, name this guy barrel. I'm going to add an event here that says explode. Make it global. Cool. Close that guy. Go back to my click manager. I'm going to send that event. 
So I just want to kind of take a break here and play, because I actually haven't played the game yet. So while this thing is running, I want to see if I'm clicking. It's actually processing the event. And when I click the barrel, cool, it changes states. So let me do that again. Actually, let me just set it up so that I'm going to tell the barrel to explode. Go back to here. So I'll keep this off on the side, make my layout something more reasonable. Here. Uh, I need a light in my scene. Directional light seems good. Make my directional light cast shadows. Barrel is floating on the ground. That's OK. OK, so my click manager is here. Clicking on things outside the barrel. Click on the barrel. And it transitions. And now I know that I've clicked on the barrel. Cool. So the next step is go to my barrel. And I'm going to edit its FSM. I'm going to say waiting. I'm going to say idle is the default. Make a new one that says, I'm going to call it on fire. And then the final one is going to be blow the hell up. So idle will go to on fire as soon as I get the event that says I should explode. And then on fire, I just want it to wait for three seconds. And then go here, and then blow the hell up. So I'm just going to watch this barrel state so that when I click on it, I want to see a transition. So it's on fire three seconds later, and then it goes to blow the hell up, right? And blow the hell up, I think all I just wanted to do first is just destroy itself. So I should be able to click on this barrel, it waits three seconds, and then it kills itself. Bam. Cool. So I'll go here. Let's make a prefab out of this guy. We haven't gotten any of the fun stuff yet, though. Prefabs, make a barrel. Let's just make sure that this works with multiple barrels in the scene. So I'll go here, duplicate this guy, duplicate this guy, duplicate this guy, duplicate this guy. And let's toss, let's make this guy. Go here. And go here. If you want to toss on play. So I'm going to click on one of these in the scene. I'll set that one on fire, set those on fire. Let's play a particle effect when they blow up. So I go to here, edit the prefab. Here, I'm going to create an object. Let's make a quick particle system that's an explosion. Okay, that's my particle effect. I kind of wanted to see it a little bit better. I don't want it to emit at a rate. I want it to emit in a burst. Let's do 500 particles. Seems like a logical. So they're all kind of going up in a single weird shape of a cone. I want it on a sphere in random directions in a radius of 0.5. I also don't want it to last at that long, so I'll have it only live for half a second. Cool. Um, speed seems OK to me. Color over lifetime. Let's just edit that bad boy. Let's start off at reddish. I want to go towards black. And I want to slightly alpha out as it gets there. And I want to stay black early. Okay. Maybe I could have a transition to like an orange. I don't know. OK, that's good enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy. I'm sure I could spend a lot more time on it. But now I have this particle system, PS underscore explode. Uh, I like prefixing things because it makes it much easier to tell in here what they are. It's a particle system. It's a game object. So now in my barrel, blow the hell up is going to spawn a particle system. And I want to spawn on my own position. 
cool. So now when I play, they become on fire and they blow up. Let's add some sound because that's the next logical thing. I'm just going to delete this guy. Um, honestly, like I like to use um, BFXR. BFXR is great for Ludum Dares as well. This is a great sound creation tool. None of these sounds have ever been heard before. Ugh. Turn this down a little bit. Okay, somehow that completely muted it. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the projector here. This is actually great because you can take these are all like retro style like 8-bit uh, effects, so they'll work for a lot of games. But <laughs> that seems good. So I can make it uh, last longer. Good enough. Export this as a wave. Go here. Go to documents. Go to my desktop. Oh yeah, that's what most people use in Ludum there is that utility. So I'm just have this explosion now, right? <laughs> Couldn't have been easier to make a sound, right? Super fast. Like there's no excuse for not having sounds in your game because of that. So I could just go here, play sound. Explosion. I want like a, a fizz sound though, so that when it's on fire, that it sounds like it's about to blow up. Cool. You could also have it play um, a variety of sounds, right? You can actually have it play a random sound. So why don't I take more of these sounds so that <coughs> Export that one too. Let me export this one. Go back to Unity. Open up my desktop. Take these two guys and drag them here. Put them under here. I hit the barrel. And now instead of just playing one sound, because that just gets to be kind of repetitive, I'll just have a choose between these three. It makes a lot of difference. Cool. Ah, that particle system, I set it to loop. Oops. Looping. OK. So what's remaining? Well, I need to, I want to make, uh, play a sound while it's on fire. And I want to actually affect other barrels, which is the last part that I'm going to show. So let's make, let's create a sound that's like, um, like it's on fire. I don't know what that. I'm not sure about that one. Okay. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use that. <laughs> Why not? Randomize five. Um, on fire. I love BFXR, by the way. I'm just tossing in iTween for now because it's easier. So here's the thing. I want to play a sound while it's on fire. So I'm going to have it play a sound, but I want to also end. Maybe I could just play the sound, and then we'll see how, what, it, what it seems like. So once it's on fire, I'm just going to have it play that sound. Play a sound. Cool. On fire. That seems good. Very 
Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of anticlimactic. Do you think my explosion sounds need to be better? Maybe I should get rid of the one that's like. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it should be two seconds instead of that. And I should get rid of the one that sounds like kind of silly. It's not That's kind of that's kind of funny though. Still maybe too short. Yeah. One second delay. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do another thing. Let's turn these. Let's add a rigid body to these guys, and let's start moving them. Let's start pushing them out. So I'm going to add the rigid body. And when it explodes, I want it to just do explode, which is nice because um, it'll automatically do a radius around me. So I'm going to specify the position. Get position. And I'm going to get the position of myself. I'm going to store that into a variable. And I'm going to store that here here, and I'm going to use that here, and the force I want to apply, let's say, is, I don't know, 1,000 with an upwards modifier of, what does this say? A value of 2, I want to do uh, 3, here. and a radius of maybe 30. So let's just see what happens when I set this up to cause an explosion, everything around it, in a 30 unit radius. Whoa. didn't actually edit this guy. Blow the hell up. Oh, I didn't do this in the right state. That would explain a lot of it. These two guys can get cut and paste it here. Position, world space, force mode is force. Upwards modifier is three. And the center is going to be the position. Cool. Let me just click this guy first. Go to his state. Just click. Yeah, we're going to do this this way. I'm going to watch the state. And I'm actually going to just, uh, I'm going to disable the part where it actually killed itself. Because I don't know why it's not applying the force. But it's hard because maybe this is not helping. Okay, so now I'm going to play. Do this. So it looks like it applied a force, but only to one guy. That's the position. That's the force. Game object. Its modifier layer default. That would be why. Because I didn't apply the force to barrels. One of them getting sent out. Let me make sure that oh you know what? I didn't add rigid bodies to all of them. That's that's the problem. This guy has a rigid body. But I did not add a rigid body to the actual guy here. Cool. And this guy's just an outcast, so he gets deleted. Cool. OK. So that means I can go back and re-enable the part where it kills itself. I feel like that's a little bit crazy. Let me just do this. I feel like the radius is a little bit too high, too. So now what I want to do is I want this explosion to also trigger the explosion in the other guys, too. This might be a little bit too weak. So how do I do that? Well, you can set up a state machine. So there's a playmaker action to get you the nearest. That looks good. Um, you can get a playmaker action that will get you the nearest object, right? So here, right after we blow up, I'm actually not going to kill myself right away. I'm going to go to a state that says, um, find closest barrel, unexploded barrel. So after it blows up, go here. And there's a thing called get closest or find closest object. Um, it allows you to search for things with a specific tag and then store them somewhere. And 
uh, allows you to get the distance. So what I want to do is I want to find any barrels that haven't blown up yet and then tell them to blow up. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go to my barrel. I need to tag it as something that hasn't blown up yet. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add two tags. I'm going to say it's um, alive. I got another one that says blown up. Now in my barrel, I'm going to find anything that is alive with my tag. Must be visible. Ignore the owner. And I'm going to store that in a variable here. I'm going to make a new variable that says barrel. And I'm going to make another variable that is the distance to that barrel. So here I'm going to store, oops, barrel is a game object. Store the barrel here, store the distance here. Once I find the closest, I'm going to go here and see if barrel is close enough. So I'm going to do a float compare. And if the distance to that barrel <coughs> is less than, what did we say the explosion was? Uh, five. So I want to match the force that it's applying. If it's equal to or less than, I'm going to tell it to blow up. Um, tell barrel to blow up. So if it's equal to or less than that distance, it's close enough. Otherwise, I'm finished. And I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go here. Dead. Which means I can take this guy, the destroy self. I'm going to destroy myself here. So see if the barrel is close enough. If the barrel is close enough, telling, tell barrel to blow up. So I need to send an event. Just like when I clicked on it, I'm going to send an event. I'm going to send it to that barrel I found, FSM is FSM name, tell it to explode. And then I'm going to go back and find the closest barrel again. Before I finish this, I'm going to also set the tag on that barrel. I'm going to tell it that it's blown up so that I don't look for it again. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to find the closest barrel that's alive, see if it's close enough. And if it is, I'm going to tell it to blow up. And then go find another closest barrel after that. Cool. So that should be it. So now what will happen is that as soon as I click on one, it should find all the other barrels and tell them all to blow up. Not work. Uh, did I actually edit the correct one? Find closest unexploded barrel. Blow up. Use the owner. Find a tag that's alive. Must be visible. Let's just see what happens here. <coughs> I'm always missing one thing. Which barrel am I clicking on? This guy? Fire. Looks like it failed to find the closest barrel. If, it's, if the distance is greater than. Yeah, I'm actually going to disable this again. I'm just going to let this happen. I'm not going to do any of the uh, other stuff. Let's just see what happens when I click on this specific barrel. Debug. I just want to see the distance here. Yeah, it automatically failed. It says it couldn't find any barrels that were close. Oh, because I didn't tag them all as alive. That's the last thing. I'm sure everyone's made that mistake too, forgetting to tag things. Cool. Okay, so then I just need to re enable this on the prefab. I'm going to click the guy on the edge. Cool. Now I have this barrel factory. I can do this. Because why not, exactly? If I don't cause it to crash, let's just see what happens. Oh, god. <laughs> if this crashes, then it's entirely my fault. Oh, 
<laughs> barrels are falling from the skies. I don't know why they're all falling from the sky, but I'm blowing them up anyway. I, I, I feel like I have too many of these. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I duplicated them and didn't get to move all of them. And I actually duplicated my click managers too somehow. I need to delete all those because I act. Let me let me let me make something more interesting than this. Let's tweak this a little bit. I'm gonna tweak it so it's actually interesting to see. Go here. Force someone applies 300. Get this one barrel. Put my barrel in the level here. Oh, I duplicated all my directional lights too. That's good. This guy here. It's like dominoes, really. Uh, I don't think so. No? I think it's just going to all fall apart. No way. Yeah. It'll all be good. Come on, Kevin. That's totally like dominoes. <laughs> cool, right? Um, you can put a texture on them. You can have these things be destroyed when you shoot them. But that's how you find things that are close by and cause them to affect others that are nearby, right? So you can have like one barrel. So I have that guy. Click on the one in the middle. Works pretty well. OK, so. Uh, I'll upload this video so you guys can watch it. Um, I'll try to do more things like this so you guys can see interesting ways to set up behavior in your Playmaker. Um, and that's it.